Good morning and welcome to worship. Lovely to have you with us again. As you probably know, this is Palm Sunday and we are beginning to think about Jesus' journey to the cross. On Friday, if you heard the thought for the day, you would hear us beginning that journey with him and we will continue it during the week. We have a lot to be thankful for and we are glad to be able to meet together even if it is just at a distance. So, having worshipped, let us begin our service with prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that you have a plan for the world, for the universe. We thank you that before time began, you knew exactly what you would do. That you observed the people in the world and you chose those who you would teach that they might know you. And gradually you taught them and revealed yourself to them. And through Moses, you gave them the Ten Commandments. We thank you that you punished them at times that you praised them and saved them at others and that you showed them that your way was right and the best way. Lord, we thank you that that plan continues, that you brought John the Baptist to tell the, your people that the Messiah, the one promised in the, in the Old Testament by the prophets, that that Messiah was coming. 
And so there was some preparation. Lord, we thank you that you brought Jesus to this world in an unusual and amazing way, but quietly, allowing him to, to live amongst us, to grow up as an ordinary boy and into manhood, that we might know he understands and knows us. And we thank you, Lord, that you brought him out into the public eye at the right time and that you taught and helped and healed through him, revealed yourself through him. And we thank you, Lord, even for this week that is coming up with all its trauma and pain and, and sadness, for that too was in your plan. And at the end of it, there was a glorious finale. But we thank you, Lord, that it is not finished, that you have promised us in the future that Jesus will return, that your kingdom will come completely and absolutely. There may be trials, there may be earthquakes and wars and tribulation, but in the end, you will reign. Thank you, Lord, for that. And help us to work through our coming weeks. Lord, if we show unkindness or if we show any kind of wrong behaviour in this time of, of difficulty and crisis, forgive us. Help us to be better. If we allow ourselves to be lazy rather than use our time wisely, forgive us and prod us into activity. If we allow relationships to become poorer because of our isolation, help us to reach out to speak to each other. Lord Almighty, just be with us all. Help us to do the right thing in this situation. Forgive us and lead us on when we don't. Hear us now as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hello everyone. We thought we'd do some little videos to keep in touch with you all. And sometimes we might even put a little craft up. But today I thought we'd maybe do the rainbow prayer like we've done before in Junior Church. You might have seen all the rainbows appearing on windows and streets around you. And you might have put some rainbows in your window too. People are using the rainbow as a symbol of hope that this virus will soon pass. God did the same thing. He put the rainbow in the sky as a symbol of his promise, a symbol of hope. In Genesis 9, verse 13, he said, I am putting my rainbow in the clouds as a sign of the agreement between me and the earth. God placed the rainbow in the sky as a sign of his promise to never again send a flood like the one that Noah had survived in the ark. Today the rainbow is a symbol of hope for us, a reminder that God keeps his promises. I'm going to pour the water onto the skittles now and let's watch as the rainbow appears and as we do I'm going to say a prayer. Maybe this is something you could do at home with your family. Red, thank you God that you love us and that you are always with us. Orange, please help us to be patient, to wait and listen to you and to be obedient while we wait for this crisis to end. Yellow, please help all those who are scared. May they know your perfect peace that takes away all fear. Please look after all those are sick 
Green, give them the treatment and the help they need to recover. Send your healing power into all of the world. Blue, please protect all those who are working for our emergency services. Thank you for all they're doing to protect us. Purple, thank you that we are children of the King of Kings. Thank you that even though that in difficult times we can trust in you and pray your kingdom comes. Thank you God that we know you will bring us through this crisis to safety on the other side, just as you protected Noah and brought him and his family through the flood. Amen. Why don't Our sermon, our reading today is taken from Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, Tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, Say, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples did, as Jesus instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So Jesus is entering Jerusalem. He is moving forward to his fate. He has prepared the disciples as well as he can, helping them to understand, if not now, then in the future, what is happening. And he sends for a colt, for a donkey. And that seems a bit strange. But there's a reason for it. The people have heard he is coming. Whenever they hear of him and his disciples coming, they gather because they know all about Jesus by this time. They know of his miracles and his teaching. And there have been discussions about whether he is the promised one, the Messiah. And so they hear how he is approaching on the road to Jerusalem and they gather to meet him. He is coming not to the gate of kings, but to the gate of the ordinary people, the gate that enters Jerusalem by the, the south, by the way of the, the valley of Kidron. And there they are waiting for him and they see him coming on a donkey. And if they weren't sure before, that helps them to know he is very special, for it was predicted that their Messiah, their Saviour, would come riding on a donkey. And so they shout Hosanna and they lay down their cloaks and their palm branches before him as though it were a victory parade. And in a way, so it is. Jesus enters Jerusalem to the midst of acclaim and his disciples must have been absolutely thrilled this person whom they had chosen to follow was being recognised as so important. And Jesus must have had a wee ironic thought because he knew what the week would bring. Starting out well, it would have a very bad part to it and then have a good ending. I was reminded about going to Ober Amargau to see a passion play by the fact that this is Palm Sunday. It's a wonderful thing to do and I would certainly recommend anyone to do it who gets the chance. 
Oberammergau is still a village. It's not a big town. It's not been spoiled by commercialisation. And when you go, you are lucky if you get two nights in the village. Mostly it's just one or maybe outside the village. I was fortunate my package gave me two nights in a hotel in Oberammergau, which gave us time to walk about and to do a little shopping or just see the place. You get up quite early in the morning and you set off to the great big theatre, an open-air theatre. Wonderful place, huge stage. Because you're there most of the day. You have a break in the middle of the day for your lunch and a bit of, of shopping. The Passion Play has been going for many, many years. And it was started because the people there prayed that if God would deliver them from a plague, they would pre present a passion play every so many years forever. And they have done it. Very, very rarely has it been stopped. And so it's a, a beautiful theatre. And the, the really good thing about it all, it is that it is the people of Oberammergau who perform the play. They don't bring in special actors or actresses, they do it. And there's great rivalry among them, apparently, for the main parts. Young men all want to be Jesus, even if it does mean hanging literally on a cross. And when we went shopping at lunchtime, we went into a shop to purchase something and found we were being served by one of the disciples. They have ordinary jobs. And they do this in the summer. And it's understood that that's what happens. And everyone seems to take part. When it came to the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, then it, it was a real crowd scene. Loads and loads of people on the screen, on the stage. And I can remember Jesus appearing on his donkey, a real donkey, because there's plenty of room for animals too. And he came through the, the archway that is the gateway into Jerusalem with his disciples around him and the crowds round about him cheering. And there were animals in amongst the crowds as well. There were one or two sheep and a dog or two. And they just were allowed to run because that's just village life. People of all ages, children playing in and out the adults. And then I heard a baby cry and I thought, Somebody's brought a baby to the theatre. That's not very sensible. And then I realised the baby was on stage, carried in its mum's arms. And no attempt was made to hasten the baby off stage because it was crying. That was part of life too. And that picture stuck in my mind as a picture of what it really would have been like. The reality of Jesus coming through a crowd of people. And it struck me this year, after quite a while, I saw it in 2001, it struck me that that baby being there was so important because Jesus came for everyone of every age, from the tiniest baby to the oldest person trying to see him. And at that time too, there would be lots of different nationalities in that crowd. There would be people from Jerusalem, people from Judea round about. But because the Passover was coming up, there would be people of all different nationalities from round about. And he came for all of them too. And so he went into Jerusalem amidst all the acclaim and went to the temple, the most important place. And then tomorrow was another day. And it struck me that, that Jesus came for everyone today too. Who knows what this next week will bring to us. There are all kinds of dire predictions. We don't know what it's going to be like. There may be sadness. There may be worry. All kinds of things. He came to save humanity 2,000 years ago. But he's here for us too today. Whatever we go through, he is there. 
if things go badly for us or those we love, then he has promised us eternal life to those who believe. We will not be lost. If it's simply rough and we get through it somehow, then I believe that at the end of this time, there will be a better world. Just as at the end of that dreadful week for Jesus, when he suffered and was betrayed and hung on that cross and died, at the end of all that, there was a wonderful, glorious finish to that play as he appeared again in his white robes with the light shining on him and people bowed down before him. So I believe that at the end of all this trouble that we're in just now, there will be a better future. For Jesus is here for us, for all of us. People cannot go back to the way the world was. We have seen things happen in this last fortnight that would have been unthinkable a month ago. Politicians working together, businesses working together, people being selfless in order to save others, enduring hardship and difficulties in order to save others. Medical staff and other necessary staff working long, long hours to help us all. And at the end of all this, when we begin to get back out, on that day when we get back into our church in Kentigans and we are able to have a wonderful service of thanksgiving, then hopefully we will find that we live in a changed world. We will find that we live in a world which has seen a better way of living, a way of cooperating and helping each other, of being kind, not competitive. A world in which Jesus' way is the right way. And I pray that people will recognise that, that Christian teaching has always recommended this way of life and that people will take on board these ideas, that they will look for Jesus and they will begin to live his way forever, not just for the time it takes for the virus to be controlled. And I pray that people will see through the way in which Christians are behaving, the way they are helping each other and the solidarity amongst us, and the hope that is amongst us. I pray that they will see that and they will want to join us. They will want to become part of the Christian community. It's not an easy time. It wasn't an easy week for Jesus. It was a terrible week at the end. But he came through it to victory and so will we. And hopefully at the end of it, we will be part of a better life, a better world, where Jesus is proclaimed and recognised throughout the world. Pray for that. Pray for that result. Amen. Let us bring our prayers for others before God. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you at any time and ask you for anything and you will hear us. And Lord, there are many, many things just now that we need to pray to you for. We remember, first of all, those whom we know who are ill with this virus at home or maybe even in hospital and even perhaps people who have lost someone near to them. Lord, be with them all. We pray especially for medics, putting their lives at risk in some cases. We pray, Lord, for the right equipment for them, that they might be safe. And we pray for all who support them in the hospital and perhaps are offering extra help outside or with hot meals. May they get the help they need. Lord, we remember those who have to do administration, 
which makes sure that people have what they need, whether it is equipment or food or just any service that is vital to them. We pray that these things will work out. And we pray for people isolated, shut in and already feeling that strain. Lord, may they be comforted by a friendly voice on the phone or a knock at the door and a neighbour saying hello from the garden gate. Lord, may they know your presence too. And Lord, we remember people who are affected in other ways. People who have the ordinary everyday crisis that go on all the time. Perhaps another kind of illness and in hospital because of that. Or a crisis in the home when there's a leak and they can't find a plumber. Or a fire down the road and they can't stay in their home. Lord, we pray for all people who have an added burden for in this time of worry in general. And for those who are in camps and places, Lord, where it is not safe to be with this virus threatening to run rampant through them, we ask a special blessing that they might be kept safe. Lord, in this time, keep us all cheerful. Keep us helping each other, encouraging each other, and above all, Keep us turning to you, that we might know your strength to get through this time of crisis. And we pray, Lord, that this will soon be over. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're going to hear our next hymn, but we'll finish with that. And I'll just say the blessing just now. May the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all evermore. Amen. Bye. Amen.